Has anybody here ever used Google Takeout before? All right, so Google Takeout is a thing where you can download any information that Google has on you. In 2019, I lost my archive of all my YouTube videos, so I thought I'll just download them all from YouTube. And while I'm scrolling through because it's taking forever to load one of the tabs, just out of curiosity, I'm looking at the other stuff they have on me. And most of it was kind of boring. And then I come to this one section that says transcriptions, and I go, huh? And I take a look, I click transcriptions, and I see 2019, and I see all these weird things that sounded like arguments with my girlfriend. And I was kind of confused because I actually got along with the woman I was with at the time. So why do I have these things that look like arguments? And it wasn't from 2019. My brain just kind of inserted the one there where it wasn't supposed to be. These were actually arguments from 2009, 10 years ago, because every single thing that I had ever said into my phone was being logged by Google, not only uploaded with audio recording so I could download it and listen to angsty 19-year-old me arguing with my girlfriend, but I could also read all the transcriptions of everything that was said. Google had this feature called voice to text, which I thought was pretty cool. I had come from a Blackberry storm back in 2008, and I just did not want to type into a phone anymore. So I was using voice to text and not realizing, okay, you know, maybe there's some internet connection here, but that you're logging every single thing that I said. Ever. This was very creepy because if somebody had hacked my email account, you know, usually I just delete all the emails that I have just in case something like that happens. I didn't even know this information was being logged, so I had no way to actually find it and delete it. And many people would say something along the lines of, well, you probably agreed to that. And unfortunately, that. Let's be real, they're probably right. You know, when you uh, install Microsoft Windows, how many people here have ever read the entire end user license agreement? Exactly. And there are every, in every YouTube comment, you'll typically say, I read the license agreement. Like, no, you don't. Just shut up. No, no, you don't. No, you don't. Fuck you for even like, claiming that you do, you asshole. No, you don't. Uh, and you know, this is something I remember talking about a few months ago with the Sony Discovery thing. So there are people, and when you go to uh, Sony's online content purchasing platform, it'll say, purchase. It uses the word purchase. There were people that spent $15 buying something, not streaming, but buying it, and it just disappeared from their library. And if you read the end user license agreement I did on, on a live stream, you have to get to page 21 to read legalese that only ChatGPT can decipher if you're not a lawyer to figure out on page 21 what you purchase is a, a temporary license that can be revoked at any time by Sony for no good reason. And this is something that I like to call EULA roofing, end user license agreement roofing, where, you know, te technically you could set it, you know, I'm sure you, but, but, but like if you knew what was going on, you probably wouldn't. Have. With a lot of these companies, you'll see if you're on a Chevy's webpage, if you want to upgrade a new package for your wheels, you're going to have font that's this big and images and videos playing on the website to advertise that feature. But the section of their site that goes over the fact that they're selling your data to LexisNexis, which then goes to insurance companies to see every single time you've quickly accelerated, that, that, that's on page 300 of a 353 page EULA. And this is a, a, a problem because like, I, I like having a decent keyboard on my phone. And the problem, has anybody here used like any one of these standard stock open source keyboards? Not the one that comes with your phone by default from Google. Have you ever like tried using the Android open source keyboard? Anybody here? Or like any, any soft keyboard? Like, okay, do you ever notice that you feel like you're typing drunk when you use these keyboards versus the Google keyboard? I, I hate to admit it, but the Google one is damn good. It's just, it's just better. And uh, so we decided here to try and make something better, something where instead of connecting to the internet to figure out uh, how to memorize your typing styles, it does that using a local-based AI. And we also got a voice one that also works based on a local AI. So you can train this thing on a regular basis. It gets better as you continue using it. And you can use a firewall to not allow it to connect to the internet, and it will still work. So for instance, I could look at my phone right here. Supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. OK, you can't see that because I don't have a fancy PowerPoint, but it actually worked. And you can download it here and try it for yourself. <laughs> and it will actually work. And the best part of this is not only does it work, but when you have uh, Google's voice to text offline and this one offline, this is faster and more accurate. It inserts punctuation. When you use Google's voice to text, you have to say, hello, exclamation point. I heard you were in town, comma. So I'd like to see you. With this one, it automatically tells when it thinks that you've taken a break that's a, comma, that's a comma versus a break that's a period. Sometimes I'll even put a semicolon in there. Further, you can actually insert things into it so that people don't know that you're using voice to text. A lot of the time people can tell when I'm using voice to text because it gets certain things wrong. His name is Aaron, not Aaron, but most voice to text doesn't understand that. So I can actually add to a personal dictionary so that it understands me better based on the words that I say. It will spell my last name with two N's, which is more than I can say for the New Hampshire DMV, which is pretty nice. And I, I, if you try it out, again, it's, it's a fairly affordable application. It will still work even if you don't pay for it. Alex has told me to tell all of you that this is pre-alpha because he has very high standards for himself. I personally happen to break almost anything that I touch, as Harpo and anybody else here can probably attest. 
and I have yet to break this, which is pretty cool. So it is technically in pre-alpha, but everything works. And in my opinion, it works better than Google's voice to text. And again, you never have to connect it to the internet. This is, this is really useful. I could be driving and just hit a button and I can compose an entire email without ever having to look at my phone. And it has less errors in it than Google's voice to text. So I would suggest you try it out. And also uh, check out Google Takeout. If you ever use Google voice to text, you might just find 15 year old arguments with your girlfriend and then that you may want to delete.